Metal Bio. Uh, the company was originally started to put coatings on metal implants that go into the body for orthopedics. Um, we, <clears throat> a few years after starting the business, uh, were contacted by the European Space Agency to see could we coat some of their hardware in space such that it would be able to deal with the conditions around the sun. And uh, that was game changing for us as a business. I suppose going into the medical side of business was just really, really exhilarating for me. Uh, I never imagined as I was growing up that, you know, there was a crossover between health and uh, engineering. And uh, that came as a real surprise to me. That was probably the biggest um, milestone uh, along the way until the European Space Agency approached my business and then all of a sudden we're working in space. And that was another huge milestone. Um, just an incredible dream to be working in space. I suppose the first person would have been my dad. He was always, you know, working at something new. My mother for telling me that I should get a good education. Um, the teachers in my secondary school, because they gave us that grounding. Um, then along the way, really engineers that I met along the way, really seriously good engineers. Sometimes. Um, being the CEO of a small company, uh, working on something like we do is difficult. There is no typical day. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, um, it's a complete mishmash of different functions trying to guide people, trying to project manage, trying to raise money, trying to get new customers in, determine where the technology is going. A lot of meetings, a lot of meeting and greeting people. Um, yeah, it's, it's a very, very varied day. The main task is leading this business trying to grow this business, trying to get the technology out into the world. That's, that's the main task. Everything else is ancillary or supportive of that task. The main challenges are getting the technology out, getting people to understand that this technology is real. Working with the European Space Agency has made that so much easier. Um, our technology coats 80% of the solar orbiter coatings that are on that craft. Two of those coatings are mission critical. Um, that helps the wider metal working community to understand what we have. The coolest thing about my job is meeting phenomenal game-changing, game-setting people around the world. I've just been really privileged. I've met two presidents of this country, been out on trade missions with them, working with the likes of John Halligan as Minister for Innovation. Um, I've met two Taoiseach on my travels, um, as well as a whole lot of dignitaries and notable people in other countries, particularly technologists. Um, working with the European Space Agency and the depth of knowledge that they have and the just phenomenal brains that they have in science and engineering and in the importance of what's happening in space to how we live and continue to live into the future on this planet. That's just such a privilege. It's, it's nothing short of a privilege. It is just an honor. When I live in one place and I work in another that's two and a half hours away, um, spending so much time on the road is a challenge. Being on your own, 
on planes and in hotel rooms where you're completely out of sync with you know home and uh, trying to figure out when am I going to call, when, when do I eat, when should I go to bed, how am I going to get enough rest, all of that to do with travel is hugely exciting and it's hugely draining as well. I bring change and I bring persistence and tenacity in that I don't give up ever, ever. No matter how bad it gets, no matter how hard it gets. I don't want to get off this merry-go-round. This is just as good as it gets. And, uh, but I don't tolerate failure and I don't tolerate no. Um, so persistence and tenacity, I think, are two of the traits. And then also the need to continue to change. Science, science, science. <laughs> Everything had to do with science. I didn't do biology, but I'm a biomedical engineer. Um, yeah, everything. I, when I was a kid, there was no internet, and uh, my parents bought the Encyclopedia Britannica, and I read it. Whatever number of feet long it was, I read it from cover to cover. Um, just that insatiable need to understand how things work and science best met my needs in school then to satisfy that hunger as to how things work. I uh, went to UCD to do mechanical engineering uh, in 1982 and graduated in 1986. Um, I took on a master's at the time that I didn't finish because I got a job before I finished it and uh, regretted not having the master's. Uh, so when I was in my late 30s I went back to do a master's in biomedical engineering because I'd spent all my career doing biomedical engineering with American multinational companies. Um, I didn't really do much mechanical engineering, which was my qualification. So I went back to try and get a qualification <clears throat> around what I was doing day to day. And um, that proved to be a pivotal move because <clears throat> I, did a, I did that master's with Trinity, but it also involved uh, spending time in the University of Limerick and spending time in the University of Ulster up in Jordanstown. And, um, I met people in those two universities as well as in Trinity that um, gave me the grounding for starting the business in bio. Uh, my fine or my thesis project, sorry, in in um, that master's program helped me to solve a problem in work, but it also introduced me to titanium and introduced me to grit blasting, and they became the two main ingredients in the concept that is the invention in environment. Further education is really important. Keeping up with developments is really important. Um, being part of that frontier of change is really important. Understanding how the world around you works, not just from a science point of view, but from a human nature point of view, and feeling now that I can contribute something back. All of those things were important. The world is hard to really beat being accepted as the mission critical coding for a mission to the sun. When the probe has done its job for a while in space, we will have the closest man-made thing to space. We protect the front of the sun-facing solar orbiter when it's three quarters of the way to the sun uh, for a number of years at 540, 40, 50 degrees Celsius. That's sort of humbling, but that's my version of being on the podium in Crow Park on all Ireland winning day <laughs> and holding the Sam McGuire aloft. You know, it's a, uh, it's, it's, yeah, that's, Hard to beat.
I suppose two things that uh, I think are important for me, an inquiring mind, I never stop looking for answers, ever. I don't, I don't think I'm the best, I don't think I have got the best tools from an engineering or science point of view to fix those problems, but I bring people around me who have. Um, so I think I have an inquiring mind, I work well with people, and I'm persistent in driving to try and make sure that anything that I think is worthwhile pursuing, that I pursue it to the very, very end. Probably the best way of answering that is to pick a person who I'd love to be. So if I had my choice of people I'd like to be, it would be Sergey Brin in Alphabet or formerly Google. Because <laughs> he doesn't have the headaches, right, of running the business. He has the privilege of scouting for the technology. Do it is the first thing. Um, there's not enough people doing science. Uh, there's not enough girls doing science. Um, girls in particular, in particular, bring a, a, a different atmosphere to research and to advancing that research and applying that research. Um, I just don't think that there's enough uh, inclusion at all of that mindset that, that women bring to science. For any job in, in, in science and engineering, I think the first one has to be curiosity. Uh, you, you have to have an inquiring mind. You have to want to know what's out there, or what's in there, or how does it work. Um, why is it the way it is? So to, to, I suppose that's the why piece. Um, I think that an, another characteristic that people have to, to have is determination to see it through. So yeah, persistence uh, to follow through on what it is that they're looking at and to try and get an answer. And I think another characteristic that people have to have in science is, you know, sort of empathy and understanding of where it's going and for what reason. Uh, change for the sake of change is not, it, it's useless. It has to have a purpose, it has to have a reason and maybe making money is not always the right reason. Be curious and to go out there and understand how things work in nature. So anything to do with animals, anything to do with plants, anything to do with materials and understanding those materials and to be curious as to how they work. And to understand, even if it is a phone, a uh, smartphone, to, to, to have an idea of how it works as opposed to how the software works, to, to understand the materials that they have in their hand. But, so jobs that can get them those insights. Thank you.